Hey, Chuck here. In this video, we are going to change the oil in my 2021 Royal Enfield Meteor 350. Now, if you've never changed the oil in a motorcycle before, don't worry. I'm gonna talk you through this like you've never done it before. Just watch this video all the way through before you do anything, and then have it handy when you're changing your oil so you can refer back to it. If you have changed motorcycle oil before, this should take you about 30 minutes or less. If you've never done this before, give yourself about an hour to go slow and steady and make sure you're doing everything right. If you're not a mechanical person, if you don't know a lot about engines, it's important to know that changing your oil in your motorcycle is probably the number one thing you can do to extend the life of your engine and your motorcycle. Dirty oil and a low oil level is the easiest way to trash your engine. If you open up your owner's manual and look at the maintenance schedule for the Meteor 350, it says to do your initial oil change at 500 kilometers, which is about 311 miles. Now, I already had that done at the dealership. They recommend that you take your bike in for the initial 300 mile checkup so that they can do a valve check as well, so I did that already. The next actual oil replacement they have listed here is at 10,000 kilometers, or 6,200 miles. But they suggest that you inspect the oil and top it off as needed at 5,000 kilometers or 3,100 miles. Now I've never waited that long to do an oil change on a motorcycle. My bike right now is at 2,600 miles, which is 4,184 kilometers. And I think my oil looks pretty dirty, so I'm gonna go ahead and change it today. Clean oil means a healthy bike. If you're ready to change your oil, start by buying oil and a filter for your motorcycle. If you're totally new to this, don't just go to the auto parts store and buy any oil. Find out what kind of oil your bike needs. Go to the owner's manual or ask the dealership. Find out what kind of oil is specifically recommended for your bike. Then buy that specific oil. Don't mess around. This is the life of your engine we're talking about. So just get the right stuff. The Meteor uses 1.7 liters of oil and oil comes in one liter bottles. So plan on buying two liters and you'll have a little left over at the end. Now I bought my bike brand new from a local dealership. So, to make things easy on myself, I just walked in there and said, hey, I need oil and a filter. They handed me two liters of this stuff right here. And they gave me a Royal Enfield Meteor oil filter as well. Easy peasy. Now, make sure that you have the right tools to change your oil. You really only need a couple. For the Meteor, you're going to need some kind of 8mm wrench. You can use an open-ended wrench, a box wrench, or a socket wrench. Any one of these is going to work fine. If you have to go out and buy something for this, I would recommend a socket wrench. It's a little more expensive, but it's always the easiest. Now the toolkit that comes with your Meteor 350 has the wrench you need to do this inside of it. Instead of using my 8mm wrench, I'm going to try to use the one that came with the toolkit to see how it works. You're also going to need a 5mm Allen wrench, which is also called an Allen key. I have a set of those here with different sizes on it, but you can buy them individually. And Royal Enfield recommends to have a small pair of needle nose pliers with you while you're changing your oil. You'll see why when we get into it. You're definitely going to need some kind of pan to catch the old dirty oil as it comes out of your bike. And it needs to be able to hold at least two liters or more. Another thing you should have with you is a clean plastic funnel to put into the oil fill hole. They sell these at auto parts stores or hardware stores. This thing is really gonna help you put the clean oil into the bike. And if you want to wear some plastic or rubber gloves while you're doing this to keep your hands clean, have those with you as well. I happen to have a box of these cheesy plastic gloves handy, so I'm going to see how they work to keep my hands clean while I change the oil. Lastly, I would recommend having a full roll of paper towels handy to clean everything up as you go. So once you've got everything, lay it out next to your bike. You're going to be laying on the ground for part of this, so wear some clothes that you don't mind getting dirty. And if you're doing this in your garage or driveway, you may want to put something like cardboard down underneath to keep the oil from staining the concrete. But if you do this carefully, all the oil should go right in the pan. And you want your bike to be completely cold when you're doing this. Don't go on a two hour bike ride and then immediately change your oil. If the engine is hot and the oil is hot, you're just gonna burn yourself five different ways. So start with a cold bike and go through these steps. Start by putting your bike on the center stand. Start your bike and gently bring the RPMs up for 10 seconds. Then let it idle for 15 seconds. Turn off the engine and let it sit for two minutes to let the oil settle. So now we're basically going to do three things. Step one, 
Drain the old, dirty oil out of the engine. Step 2. Switch the oil filter while the engine is empty of oil. And step 3. Put the new, clean oil into the bike. Okay, let's do this. Step 1. Drain the old oil out of the engine. You're going to have to remove this plate on the bottom of your engine block so all the oil can drain out. This is where you use your 8mm wrench. First of all, slide the oil pan under this plate so it catches all the dirty oil that comes out of the bike. And I always like to open my oil cap just a little bit so the airflow allows the oil to completely drain out. Loosen these two bolts. I would suggest breaking the seal on both of the bolts first. Then you can put the wrench away and finish unscrewing these bolts with your fingers. And it looks like the tool from the toolkit did just fine. The dirty oil is going to start spilling out as soon as you loosen this plate, so be ready. If you let the bolts or the plate fall into the oil pan, no big deal. You just have to fish them out later. Now there is a device inside this opening called an oil screen. We have to pull that thing out. Royal Enfield recommends you use the needle nose pliers to grab this and pull it out. The pliers didn't really work too well for me. I ended up actually just wiggling it loose with my fingers and getting it to come out. And when it does come out, a gush of oil will probably come out afterwards. Now, this is important. This oil screen does not get thrown away. Just kind of clean it off and get ready to put it back in later. And these cheap little gloves I was using started to come apart, so I gave up on them. So let the oil run out for a couple of minutes while we move on to Step 2. Changing the oil filter. On the right side of your bike's engine, you'll see this metal cap with three bolts holding it on. This is where the oil filter is hiding. Use your 5mm Allen wrench to loosen these bolts. When you do, again, some oil is going to spill out, so make sure your pan is under this area so the oil doesn't spill onto the floor or the ground. If you have a pan that's big enough to stay under the engine oil drain and also under this area, that's a bonus. This is the first time I've ever changed the oil on this style of bike, so I don't know how much oil is going to come out of here. I put some paper towels on the chrome exhaust pipe to keep it clean. So pull out your Allen wrench and unscrew these bolts. Again, break the seal on the bolts first. Then you can unscrew them with your fingers. Now there is a spring that holds the oil filter in place on pretty much every bike that I've ever worked on. Some motorcycles have the spring inside the cap, like my wife's Rebel 300, which is actually kind of a pain because the spring keeps falling out on the floor while you're trying to work with it. But Royal Enfield mounts the spring on the oil filter itself, which I think is pretty smart. Makes it easier to change the filter. So nice job, Royal Enfield. Take out the old dirty filter and set this thing aside. It's pretty much trash. Take your new filter out of the box. You can see it has a new spring on it as well. And just stick it right back in. Make sure it's nice and snug. And then put that metal cap back on with the three bolts. Make sure all of the Allen bolts are nice and tight. Then get out your paper towels and totally wipe the oil off of everything. Now, before we move on to step three, we need to put the drain plate back on underneath the bike. And, very important, you need to put the oil screen that you removed earlier back in here before you put the plate on. It just pushes up in and kind of clicks into place. You'll feel it when you push it in. Then just screw the plate back on. Make sure they're nice and tight. Now finally step three, putting the new clean oil into the bike. Go back up to the oil plug on the right side of the bike, the one you loosened earlier, and take it completely off. Before you put your funnel in here, make sure it's completely clean. You don't want anything getting into this opening. No dust, no dirt, no debris of any kind. Anything that gets in here is just going to screw up your engine. 
the only thing that ever goes in here is brand new clean oil. So put the funnel in and pour your clean oil in. The Meteor engine takes 1.7 liters, so you can go ahead and just pour the first liter completely in. The second bottle, you'll need to pour in 0.7 liters, so a little more than half. The trick here is to pour half the bottle in and then start to pour slowly, a little bit at a time, and watch the oil level window on the side. There are lines on both sides of the window, indicating the minimum and maximum levels of the oil. The lower line is the minimum, and the upper line is the maximum. Just pour in the oil bit by bit until you see that the level reaches the upper maximum line. Don't go over it. If you go just a hair over, that's okay. But be careful not to overfill it. It's a very bad thing to do. If you put way too much oil in and you can't see the top of the oil level, just take a moment and drain some out through the bottom plate again. You don't want to overfill your engine oil. When you have the oil level at or just below the maximum line, just put your cap back on. You're done. Your bike is now ready to ride. So if this is the first time you've ever changed the oil in a motorcycle, especially your own bike, congratulations. You're not only cool for riding a bike, you're twice as cool for changing your own oil. You're taking care of your ride. If you have any questions for me or comments, just leave them below. I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.